Okay, so welcome along to another DICA Data Training Academy. My name is Robert Crane, uh, and the details are there if you wish to get in contact uh, with me. So the webinar has started, and we are recording at this point in time. If you do have questions uh, about any of the topics that are covered here, please make sure that you contact uh, DICA Data directly. Um, the email address for that is microsoft.sales at dickadata.com. Au. Now with that, let's have a look at our upcoming webinars. Our plan for the next couple of weeks obviously is to look at Windows 10 today. Uh, next week we'll be diving into uh, the mobile device management, especially around the Office 365 uh, suite. The following week we'll be looking at an introduction to uh, Azure. So again, uh, we did a bit of an uh, introduction to that in relation hey, to Office mm -hmm. 365, but we'll focus more on the Azure product directly uh, on the 12th of August. And Rob, the week, can you hear anyone? And the week after that will be... Rob, uh, can you hear me? I can hear somebody in the background there. Yeah, there's nothing being displayed on the screen at the moment. Everybody's sitting here going, we can't see anything, but you're talking about stuff showing up on the screen. Uh, but you're dialing in, aren't you, on a phone? No, I'm connected through Skype. Uh, well, what... Let me just hang on. Let me just stop the recording. Okay, so again, sorry about that uh, interruption there. We uh, have a bit of a confusion as to the URL for people to see that. So um, we'll just have to continue on. And again, the meeting is being recorded, so you can uh, view it after the fact. So thanks for letting us know that. Uh, again, what we've got here uh, on today's agenda is we're going to have a look at Windows 10 around the uh, availability. Uh, we're then going to dig into uh, the features. Uh, and then we're going to look at Windows as a service, the security, hopefully do a bit of a demo, um, and again, come away with um, some best practices and some takeaways as we always do. Now again, just to illustrate that uh, there is a slightly different URL for those. There was a mistake initially, so there should be a new URL coming out. If you can't see anything on your screen, look out for a new URL directly from Dicker or an update in that document. Otherwise, just listen to the audio and please watch the recording afterwards. So with that, let's get into it. So to start off with is what we're going to see is that there are going to be a number of Windows 10 uh, desktop versions available. Uh, there is going to be a home user version. There will be a professional, a pro version. There'll be an enterprise version and an education version. So all of these will be available uh, via different means, different distribution methods. So for example, the enterprise uh, SKU will only be available, as I understand it, under volume licensing. So again, keep your eyes out for that. Now the URL um, that I've listed here basically uh, will give you the FAQ on the different desktop versions that are available for you to uh, roll out to customers and for yourself. Now, what we also will see is that all qualifying Windows 7, Windows 8 and 8.1 machines are eligible for a free upgrade for a 12 month period. OK, so what this means is that all of those qualifying machines will receive basically notification in the system tray, if you haven't already seen it, that they are eligible for a Windows 10 a free Windows 10 upgrade. Now, what they can do is simply click on that and go in and reserve that um, ability. And then what will happen is, is they'll be able to receive that download. The way they will be receiving that download, it will be delivered via a Windows update. So that will be coming via Windows update through their normal process. Now, once they've accepted a reservation, uh, then basically what will happen is, is that um, they will put a, be put into a queue to receive that. Now, the important thing to remember here is at this point in time, there is no RTM as it is um, ISO available. There is one coming, but you need to appreciate that some of the differences here around Windows 10 are the fact that it is now not a, I suppose, a single product or a gold master like it used to be. There's not a DVD. It is now a product that will be updated constantly. So even if you do get the product today, you could expect to see some updates almost immediately. And this is going to continue on for the life of the product. So this is one of the major changes in the way that 
Windows will now be delivered. So, I mean, the first thing to remember is at the moment there is no release ISO. If you do want to use an ISO to make it easier to distribute across the network, the recommended way generally is to download the uh, preview ISO and then you can upgrade the machines from there. So at this stage, the preview ISO will get you the majority of the code and then you can just do a Windows update to get any of the differences and activate that machine. But Microsoft have committed that they will be making available a release or final version or the 29th of July stamped edition of an ISO, but no specifics on that as yet. Now, the other thing to remember is if, you're, if you have reserved or your customers have reserved their upgrade, the upgrades will be staged. Okay, so what we're trying or what Microsoft is trying to obviously avoid is everybody flooding the internet, everybody trying to download around three gig of files. So what's going to happen is, is that the upgrades will be staged. You, even though you have reserved your copy, you may not get it immediately today. Um, it may be a day or two. And again, there is a priority. And the way the priority is currently uh, set out is those people who signed up to the Windows um, Insiders program, um, they will be the first in the queue. So if you've signed up as a Windows Insider, you will be in the queue. But remember that, again, it's a stage rollout. It may take a number of hours, a number of uh, day or two for it to be pushed down to your system. Because, again, the idea is, is that as Microsoft starts off pushing it out to people who are testing, then they can take the feedback, they can make any adjustments they need to, they can look at the throttling requirements to do the downloads and then push it out as required. So again, it will probably start off relatively small, but we expect to see it um, uh, roll up, uh, scale up as uh, it goes along. So again, don't expect, even though you have reserved your version of Windows 10, that you'll get it immediately. You are simply placed in a queue and it will be made available to you uh, very shortly. Now, for more information, you'll see a URL down there that you can look at about upgrading the version of Windows. Now, I've got some more details, a couple of slides in, in regards to the upgrade process in a little bit more depth for you. Now, when you do uh, actually see the notification, it will look what you see on the screen. You'll see a, a nice window appear that says your PC is now ready for its free upgrade. So you've reserved your copy, and when it's ready to be upgraded, you will receive that notification in the system tray. Now, you're going to need roughly about three gigs of free space uh, to install Windows 10. Uh, the, underst uh, the understanding I see so far is you're looking uh, probably around 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the programs, depending on the machine that you're running to complete that upgrade. Um, again, as I mentioned, it will be a staged rollout. So again, you'll have to wait for your uh, uh, notification that your download is ready to go. Now, my understanding again is that the information that I have is that the fully packaged product, the stuff you would see on the shelves in the shop that you could actually go in and buy, um, is probably not going to be available until the August time frame. So it's not too far away, uh, but again, at this stage, the majority of the upgrades are going to be via a digital download and are going to be via a digital upgrade to uh, the options that you have. Now, the other thing to consider is obviously there's lots of PC makers out there and that's, they all have, many of them have different um, options for upgrading Windows 10. Some will sell you basically, I suppose, a Windows 10 system, but it comes installed with Windows 8 and then you know you would have to do the free upgrade or perhaps they could do it for you. Uh, the other option is, is some PC makers are waiting for the OEM uh, disk to arrive or for them to receive an OEM master and then to roll it out onto a uh, new machine. So again, if you're expecting to get a new machine with Windows 10 pre-installed, make sure that you have a look at the different options that the PC maker is making available in regards to their machines so you don't end up with uh, any surprises there. Okay, so when the uh, upgrade does happen, what is the version that you'll be moving to? So the availability matrix that I have here, again, is available uh, at the website that I have down the bottom there um, under the specifications, which also indicates the power 
and style of machine you need to do the upgrade. So basically, if you have a Windows 7 Home Starter or Home Premium, you'll be upgraded to Windows 10 Home. If you have a Windows 7 Professional or Ultimate, which is normally what a lot of businesses would have, then they will be going to Windows Pro. Uh, also, don't forget that there is a mobile phone, a Windows phone uh, upgrade to Windows 10 Mobile coming that is not slated for release on the 29th. At the moment, we only have the desktop edition that will be available uh, in the very near future. If you have Windows uh, 8.1 Pro or Pro for students, then you will upgrade to Windows 10 Professional as well. So most businesses are probably using um, either Windows 7 Professional or Windows 8 Professional. Their upgrade uh, via this upgrade and download process will be to the Windows 10 Pro edition. Now, I've managed to locate an upgrade matrix here, which will give you some indication of the way that uh, upgrades can be managed. So what you'll see here is an indication as to whether the media ISO, when it does become available, will be able to be used to upgrade from your initial operating system to the final operating system of Windows 10. Um, so again, it, some of these machines, so for example, uh, the Windows 8.1 machine, again, needs to be upgraded by a media ISO, couldn't be done by a Windows update. But again, uh, Windows 8.1 that has been updated can receive the updates via Windows update. So again, there is a rather long URL that you can have a look at that will give you lots more information um, about how this upgrade process is going to happen and the media options that you do have available. But as I said, at this point in time, the majority of people are going to basically be uh, updating to Windows 10 via Windows Update, which means a download of around 3 gig uh, file to achieve that in uh, and when they are in the queue. The media ISO at this stage uh, will be available, made available by Microsoft uh, in the future, but there's no specifics on that yet. And it's important to remember that uh, unlike previous versions of Windows, Windows 10 will now be an operating system that is upgraded or updated very regularly using Windows as a service. So even after you install it, there is a good chance there will be a number of updates. And even two or three days later, there may be more updates because the system will be constantly upgraded for you. OK, so if you do have a uh, upgrade and you're looking to perhaps do a clean install, uh, make sure that you take note of these items before you launch into doing a clean install uh, from your Windows 10 upgrade. The very first thing you need to be aware of is you cannot use the upgrade offer to perform a clean install on the first attempt. So if you take a completely blank machine and then use the Windows 10 update somehow to uh, install, you basically cannot do that. What you need to do is you first need to ensure that you upgrade from a qualifying version of Windows 7, 8 or 8.1. OK, so you'll need to do that through the Windows update or by using the currently the preview ISO that you can download. Now, this basically registers uh, with Microsoft or confirms with Microsoft that you have a valid uh, Windows license. It then will register that license as being acceptable for Windows 10 and then note that for that machine. Now, once you have ensured um, that your upgrade is completed successfully and it has been activated, once that activation process has completed, then you are able to basically do a clean install of Windows 10 on that machine. So you can go into the recovery options in Windows 10 and you can then do a clean install using the options that come with the upgrade. So again, if you're wanting to start from a totally clean install, what you would need to do is obviously wipe the machine, put the original operating system, Windows 7 or 8.1, back on that machine, so that is in the original state, then do the upgrade either via Windows Update or via the ISO, ensure that the upgrade has completed successfully and that the Windows 10 has been activated on that machine. Once that has been completed, then you may return back and do a completely clean install of Windows 10 because that machine has been registered as a Windows 10 machine. Importantly, again, 
don't do the upgrade on a clean machine directly from Windows 10. You will need to perform the free upgrade first to make sure that your license is registered and uh, validated for Windows 10. So a few extra steps there, but again, that will ensure that you receive all the facilities and can still do a clean upgrade if you so desire to. Now, again, once you've done um, that upgrade, you then proceed to do a clean install using the media recovery or the reset function, which you can get to via start, settings, update and security, recovery, and then reset this PC, a very standard way to do it. So there's plenty of items and links on how to do that. Uh, again, we'll provide that in the resources as well. But the most important takeaway is, is that a clean install requires an upgrade first then you can, once that machine is registered with Microsoft, you can then go back and do a complete clean install on that machine because Microsoft knows that it has been upgraded and qualified and is activated. So again, make sure that you are very aware of that at this point in time, if you wish to do a clean install. So with that said, let's have a look at some of the new features. Now, I suppose that most people would be aware that the start menu has returned to uh, the this version of Windows. Uh, again, many people struggled with um, the touch only interface that come, came with Windows 8.1. Windows 10 provides, uh, I suppose, a hybrid between a Windows 7 familiar Windows 7 start environment and also the uh, Windows 8 touch devices. So again, one of the big selling points certainly um, is that the start menu has returned, which is a familiar way for many people to work with their version of Windows. One of the other big updates is Cortana and Search. So what we're going to be able to see is you'll be able to um, ask your PC to set appointments. You'll be asked, able to ask Cortana to do internet searches for you. Um, again, the whole voice activation and digital assistant is being rolled into many versions of uh, Windows and of Microsoft products. So we've seen it on the Windows phone. We've also seen it, uh, beginning to see it on Xbox, and a lot of this technology comes from the Xbox Connect that Microsoft released a number of years ago. Now, at this stage, uh, Cortana will only be available to insiders, so people on the Windows Insiders program within Australia will have the ability to uh, use Cortana. The plans are at this stage to roll out Cortana in Australia in a very short period after the initial release. The current time frame, I believe, is towards the end of August. It may be sooner, but that's my understanding of when we will see Cortana um, made fully available to the Australian market. At the moment, Cortana will be available in the larger markets, such as the US and in China, simply obviously because of the sheer volume of users that are expected in those regions. But fear not that Cortana will be coming to Windows 10 in, down here in Australia. One of the other big improvements is the concept of virtual, virtual desktop. So many people already have multiple monitors, but now Microsoft has made the ability to work with virtual desktops um, very much at the forefront. It has included the button near the search button to allow the user to create multiple desktops. So this can be handy when more, working on multiple applications. Uh, and again, you can have multiple screens on the one uh, device. So again, very easy, very quick to work with, very handy feature, I believe, to improve productivity. One of the new features also is a new browser called Edge. Edge is a lightweight browser. It is designed um, to take advantage of all the latest coding and displayability within the web, but not uh, provide the most, uh, I suppose, the most basic features that the majority of users would need. Contrary to public opinion, uh, Internet Explorer still is um, part of Windows 10 and still is available. Uh, it's not, however, surfaced on the desktop or the taskbar. You would need to add that manually as well or just do a search through uh, the Windows to find Internet Explorer and add that to the desktop. So you basically now get two browsers, uh, Edge, which is the lightweight browser. Uh, the testing that I've done with it um, works quite well, works with Office 365, um, no major issues with it but you also get the tried and trusted uh, Internet Explorer as well. Some of the new security technology is around a product called Windows Hello. So we all know that passwords can be very difficult for many users to 
manage and maintain and remember. So Windows 10 now incorporates a new facility that is incorporates things like biometrics. So you can now log on to your PC using your fingerprint, but with the correct hardware, you can have Windows 10 automatically recognize your face. So there's some great videos out there on the Microsoft YouTube channel that dive into the work they've done to make Windows Hello work in low light in um, you know, when you're looking at the side. So very impressive product. And the idea is, is that it adds another layer of security on top while making it far more convenient um, for users to log into the system. All they need to do is sit in front of it and they are automatically logged in. Now, again, you would think, again, watching those security videos, things like putting a picture in front of the camera don't work. Microsoft um, Research has done a lot of work and it's very impressive what they have been able to achieve with the Windows Hello. And we'll dive into security um, in a little more depth in a few slides. Continuum is Microsoft's concept of Windows being able to seamlessly work across devices. So if you have a device, a tablet device, much like a Surface, um, when you have the keyboard plugged in, it functions exactly as you would expect a desktop. If you then remove the keyboard from it, it will then automatically jump into tablet mode. So the idea is, is Continuum detects what the best medium or the best interface is for the device in its current configuration. Some of the more advanced features of Continuum will include uh, the ability, for example, to plug your Windows 10 phone into a, a large desktop monitor and basically use it as a desktop device. You can run things like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all from your Windows 10 phone directly. So that will be um, a great useful feature for many of the road warriors out there. And again, we're expecting to see that facility come out when Windows 10 phone is released in the near future. So again, Continuum gives you the ability for Windows to automatically detect and optimize the best interface for use on your device. Now, one of the other things that really excites me about Windows 10, I think is a major game changer, is the ability for Windows 10 to domain join directly to Azure AD. So we've talked about how Office 365 has Azure AD underneath it. Now what we're able to do potentially is we can now connect our Windows 10 machines directly via a domain join uh, button to our Azure AD. So again, I think this is a direction that shows that Microsoft is looking to move its identity management uh, for its devices and especially its PCs into the cloud and utilizing Azure AD. So again, have a look at that as a new and advanced feature. So again, what I'll do here is that rather than going through all the low level features, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop out and I will share a web link, uh, a URL here for you to uh, have a look at. And we'll just work through some of the uh, new features in the matrix here. Now, again, there is a link there that you can go in and um, spend some more time and look at more detail, but I'm just going to give you an overview here. So again, this is the URL here. You'll see that I have selected uh, the business experiences. Now, if I work through this, you'll see that device encryption is included in all versions, but things such as domain join, group policy, bit locker, um, assigned access, remote desktop, all of those are only available in the pro enterprise and education versions. Now, when you get to things like direct access, uh, Windows to go, app locker, branch cache, uh, those sort of things, you will need to have the Windows 10 Enterprise or the education to do that. So again, Windows 10 Pro uh, basically won't support things like direct access or Windows to go. Some of the other features again down here is they all support mobile device management. They have the ability, uh, again, the ones that can join Azure AD are the Pro Enterprise and Education version. Uh, again, the Business Store. So if you want to set up a Business Store, again, the Pro Enterprise and Education versions can do that. The security, all of them include the new pass, Microsoft Passport, which I'll talk about. Uh, the things like Credential Guard and Device Guard, again, which I'll mention, uh, enterprise and ed education versions only. 
And probably the most important one here is the delivering Windows as a service. So Windows as a service, which I'll come to. And again, there are a number of different ways of doing that. Um, what's called uh, the current branch and long-term servicing branch. So it's important that you understand these. And let me just pop back to the uh, slides and we will then go into that because that does need some more explaining. So again, check out that URL. That will show you all the um, features, oh, whoops, all the features side by side. Just pop through all the slides again. Don't know why it does that. And that will give you the comparison and be able to answer the question as to what each slide uh, basically does and doesn't include. Okay, so let me just get back to where I was. Okay. So Windows as a service. So Windows as a service is another very significant change for the Windows platform going forward. What it incorporates now is the concept of branches. Okay, so the first branch is what's called current. So this means that security and feature updates will be, of, will be um, pushed to the machine basically as soon as they are released. So importantly here, all Windows 10 PCs on this are on this branch by default. Okay, so every Windows 10 PC will be on the current branch by default unless changed. Windows 10 machines cannot be changed from this branch. This is their only option. So Windows 10 machines will receive security and feature updates immediately they are available. Now, if you have, um, for example, a professional enterprise or education version, so a business version of Windows 10, you are able to select the current branch for business. So what this means is, is that security updates will be pushed to the machine as quickly as possible, and the feature upgrades can be delayed for several months. Okay, so the exact day and time as refers to several months is still a bit uh, indeterminate as yet, but what it means is, is that you're able to delay feature uh, enhancements and they can be put off for a number of months. But important to remember here is they cannot be put off forever. At some point in time, these features for users on the current branch will be deployed to the machine. You can delay them, but you can't, cannot prevent them from being installed. So you need to be aware of that. And remember, if you want that to be the case, you need to change that option in the Windows machine. Now, the current branch for business, again, is only available for Windows 10 professional, enterprise, and education versions. The final option we've got here is the long-term servicing branch, okay? So this means security and feature upgrades can be delayed indefinitely and it is only available on Windows 10 Enterprise and Education. So it's not available to Windows 10 professional machines, only machines basically that have licensed from volume license when it comes to Windows 10. So what's the thinking behind this? Okay, so the reason behind this is that uh, Windows as a service means no more service packs, no more major updates. What's gonna happen is that once a Windows device is running Windows 10, uh, Microsoft is going to ensure that it is kept up to date and supported for the lifetime of that device. And there is no charge for that. So what that means is, is that new features, functionality, as well as security updates will all be available free for the life of that device. Now, many IT professionals um, can have challenges around this, but it's important to consider the wider aspects of the industry at this point in time. Basically, most people using mobile devices have all their apps that automatically update all the time. We look at many of the most modern browsers, such as Chrome and Firefox, um, they all update automatically in the background constantly as well. So we live in a world where constant updates are very, very important because the majority of security issues we have are around the fact that most users do not upgrade their machine. They do not manually go and upgrade their machines or they reject updates if they see them. It is therefore critical to improve the security of the complete internet ecosystem to make sure that all machines are as up to date and as current as possible. So again, the thinking behind this is to ensure that all devices are as secure as possible. 
But importantly, as we've mentioned here, this is a major change in the thinking when it comes to the way that Windows has been delivered traditionally. So this is a change that is going to uh, basically impact a lot of the way that Windows has been uh, rolled out for people. So let me look at a few security features. One of the new security features is called Device Guard. What this provides is the ability to start blocking malware and zero day exploits by only using uh, blocking anything other than trusted apps. So Device Guard gives you the ability to say that certain applications, unless they're trusted, are not able to execute. So again, this hopefully gets around things like uh, the crypto locker issues and other security that we see being exploited on zero day techniques. As I mentioned before, we have now Windows Hello. Windows Hello basically allows you to use biometrics to unlock your device. So, so rather than having to sit there and type in a long and complex password that constantly changes, your identity is your face. Your identity is your fingerprint. Your identity is a combination of those. Okay, the whole idea is making it easier for users, but also making it more secure. Certainly encourage you to go away and have a look at some of the videos that Microsoft have done around the security of Windows Hello. It is very, very impressive technology. Now, the other thing that they've got is what they call Passport. So the idea here is, is once you've authenticated maybe to a Windows 10 device, using your biometrics, you can then use the password, passport which has stored your credentials automatically for you and can log you in to your applications, to your websites, to your networks without the password. So again, once you create this password and verify it and make sure it's secure, it's very much like very, the traditional password vaults that we see in many other third party applications these days. Okay, so again, it will allow users to not only uh, log into things like their applications, um, but uh, it'll also allow them to do a wider variety of things such as their networks as well. So with that, let me just pop back. Hopefully everybody has um, seen uh, what Windows 10 is all about, but of course there are some people who haven't. So let me just highlight a few differences in um, this environment now. So hopefully you can see my screen now. Obviously you can see um, that I think, personally I think the, the look is much cleaner, much sharper, uh, much easier to use. The old start button is back in the bottom left hand corner. You'll notice that we get a combination of a start menu as well as our apps from the Windows 8 environment. Now, if we want to add um, something to our Windows 8, uh, sorry, to our um, uh, tabs here, we can simply right mouse click on it. We can pin it to the start bar. We can unpin it as we have. If we want to work on any of these, again, we can right mouse click, we can resize it, we can make it small, medium, wide, and you'll see that these are also active tiles. So today's weather, today's news, all that sort of stuff is there. Up the top here, we've got our most used items. So as we use different applications, they will obviously bubble up to the top and make it easier and more intuitive for users to work with. Uh, Windows Explorer has now become File Explorer. But again, very much the same sort of deal when it comes to looking at our file system. And we've got our settings. And down the bottom here, we have all our applications. Now, when we select all applications, you see that they're nicely arranged now by letters uh, to make it easier for people to find those applications. OK, so our start menu has come back. Now, in the bottom corner here next to the start menu, you'll see that we have our um, we have our uh, search directly on the line and you'll see that is able to search not only what's in the machine, but also what's also out on the internet. Now, at this point in time, this will be where the Cortana will be available once it is uh, comes to our region. In this case, I haven't configured for the region, but you will see Cortana in here. Search and Cortana, I think, is a very important part of the Windows 10 experience. Next to the search button, you'll see the task view. So now when I click that, you'll see that I can go in and I can add uh, multiple desktops. So if I go in and add a second desktop, and let me, for example, go in and run Internet Explorer on this desktop, and then click on my desktop here, you'll see that I can go back to my original desktop here and work on another application. So again, nice and easy for me to expand 
the amount of real estate that I'm using on this screen. And again, front and center for all users to work with. Next button here is my Edge browser. So you'll see that this is a cut down version, um, simplified and also much better at displaying today's modern web content. But uh, as you can see, uh, my experience has been with um, you know, the Office 365 environment with other websites that it does work quite well. It has some uh, unique features here. So we can go in, for example, and we can start making uh, web notes again. So we can start uh, adding drawing here. We can, uh, for example, highlight uh, things on our web page. OK, and then we can choose to save that and we can also share that information with others. So again, imagine a, uh, a layer of markup that could be put over the top of um, your current web browsing experience so that others who you are connected to can share that same experience. So again, some of the advantages there with um, the Edge. As you see, happily running many of the other browsers, no issues there. I'll just pop over here to my notifications. You'll see that I get my notifications for my action center down here at the moment. Uh, they're up the top there. But if I then throw it into tablet mode, so this is the concept of continuum. So by throwing it into tablet mode, you'll now see that the device thinks I don't have a keyboard and it puts it back into a touch first interface. In theory, if I then went back and connected the keyboard, it would then jump back to my familiar desktop environment. Again, if you want to get around and fiddle in some of the settings, you can go obviously to the settings option. You can look at the updates and securities. Uh, but what I'll quickly show you here is if I go to um, about, so system about, you can see that this is the area which you can join it to your domain or you can also join it to Azure AD. Okay, so again, basically have a play, but there's some of the features uh, that I have seen that uh, do make it a little bit different. Okay, so let's just pop back to the slides and look at rounding off for this session. Okay, so that's our demo. That's good. Okay, so let me just quickly talk about the opportunity I see with Windows 10. Um, my personal experience everywhere I go is customers are keen. They're ready to upgrade. Many of them have got old operating systems, old machines. They've held back. They're looking to take advantage of the latest and the greatest that is available. There's a lot of excitement out there about Windows 10. There's always some trepidation, of course. But again, Windows 10 does bring a lot of changes. And for a lot of users coming from Windows 7, because they've held off because they believe Windows 8 was a bad investment, now is the time for them and they're keen to upgrade. So my advice is, is make sure that you service that need. At least start talking to customers about Windows 10 because you don't want them pitching up one day and buying a Windows 10 machine from somebody else. And again, one of the things is, is the things that I see is that many IT resellers out there are very, very focused on keeping the status quo, trying to hold back Windows 10, trying to prevent their users from using it and not selling some of the benefits and the features. I think that there's so much more opportunity, so many more sales that can be made, so much more conversations you can have with a customer around what Windows 10 can bring to their business, what productivity improvements, how it can change them. And again, they may not upgrade immediately, but the important thing is to go there and start talking to them and showing them the new features, being the thought leader in that environment so that you're seen um, as a go-to person for that. As I mentioned, you need to be a go-to, a thought leader for your customers and for your prospects. They're going to want to know whether you're using Windows 10, what you think of it, what it works, what it doesn't work, uh, where it can help their business. If you're not using it, then you're not going to be able to answer those questions. And Windows 10 is a major change in the way the operating systems are delivered. OK, so we're now talking about Windows as a service, which means this stuff is generally going to be updating constantly in the background with new, not only security updates, but also new features. OK, what we see typically in the cloud world, as I've mentioned before, is we're moving at an exponential rate. OK, so we're not running a the world isn't running linearly, linearly anymore. It's now moving exponentially, which means that the longer you wait, the longer you don't look at this stuff, the further and further you get behind. And I see that personally with a lot of resellers looking to move to things like Office 365. That product is moving so quickly that it's very hard for them to keep on top to 
be involved and understand the basics and then learn all the new features. So again, my advice is, and the opportunity is, is don't fall behind on all this sort of stuff. Make sure that you do start using this, making sure you understand what's coming down the pipe, what changes and updates, because the clients generally are gonna get these updates. So some best practices to round off, it's free. There's no reason not to get Windows 10 today really and there's no reason not to be testing it and spinning it up yourself to see what it's all about and get familiar with it over five million people have been testing it on the windows insider program that means there are five million people who have been testing on all their apps providing feedback to microsoft this again is the most tested product that microsoft has if you have any reservations about any applications running my advice would be, be it would be very rare for them to cause a problem but if you fear that you should go out and be testing them for your clients and for yourself you need to go out and show your customers windows 10 they're going to be asking about it they're going to see it in the media they're going to see advertising it. they're going to see it on new devices you don't want them going and asking their friend or their brother or their cousin um, as a potential wedge into your business you need to go and show them they may not upgrade immediately but you need to be the point of contact that make sure that they come back to and ask about when they're ready to go to Windows 10. Remember, the most important thing I think from an IT reseller's point of view is to understand Windows as a service. Okay, most people are going to get security updates immediately. Most people are not going to be able or not going to be able to defer a lot of this sort of stuff. How does that impact the business? Um, how are you going to manage that change? How are users going to be made aware of that? Uh, again, something you need to be involved in because this is very different from typically installing patches or pushing them out or doing them on a stage basis. The commitment is to obviously make the environment on the internet more secure is to ensure that all the machines are as up to date and as current as possible and this is a major commitment and the majority of machines are probably going to move from being unpatched and out of date to being very much current and understand the cloud connectivity what we're talking about here is now windows 10 can domain join to azure ad azure ad is becoming more and more powerful in what it can do in comparison to on-premise ad so make sure that you're beginning to understand how this operating system is changing to be a service, to be connected to the cloud, to receive updates, to remove the need necessarily to have on-premise equipment. You can certainly use it with on-premise equipment the way that you have traditionally, but now we're now seeing an adjunct to that. We can now connect it direct to the cloud, which means many clients who want to have no equipment on site are now able to do this with Windows 10, which makes it, I think, a very good selling feature. So my takeaways are, as always, Windows as a service is a big change. Make sure you're on top of that. Windows 10 is aiming to be one Windows. That means that there'll be no more versions. Windows 10, it'll just be Windows. You'll get constant updates. The rumor is that there will be another major update, um, which you may equate to being you know, a service pack, but will also include many features in the September, October timeframe. So that's how quickly they're gonna start bringing out these improvements. Your customers are keen, so you should be. You don't want your customers coming to you, you turning them away because they are generally going to go and buy the product or find out about it from someone else. So that should be you. Offer to test your customer's application. Why don't you go out to your customers and basically say, look, if you're using this third party product, how about we test it on Windows 10 and just see how well it works? You know, can we help you do compatibility testing? There's great opportunity to do that for so many third party applications out there. And I think that Search and Cortana are going to become more and more important. Okay, so spend some time understanding Search and when Cortana becomes available, how to get that configured, how to make that work. Voice, Windows Hello, biometrics, all this sort of stuff really does make life a lot easier for an end user. And take advantage of being at the head of the change, right? Again, be seen as a thought leader, be seen as someone who's implementing, who understands Windows 10, who's a go-to person who can answer the questions because that's what people want. A lot of people want the new technology and they want to take advantage of all these features. So again, here's some resources. We'll make available the slides after the fact. Um, again, just before everybody pops off, I thank you very much for attending. Just let me... Uh, Put in the poll uh, where I would ask you just to quickly fill in which state your business is from so we can get an indication um, for Dicker as to uh, your location so that they can help you with your business in that regard. 
once again, uh, I thank you for attending. If you have any questions, make sure you send them to the email address we have provided. Uh, Apologise for the confusion around the URLs, but remember this uh, you, webinar has been recorded and will be made available after the fact along with the slides. So I'll give that just a sec or two to complete. And remember, please, we really like to know uh, where people are dialing in from so that we can get a bit better indication of the um, locations and we can help target the information and the assistance to those uh, on the call. So really appreciate that. So again, hopefully everybody has uh, completed that. So let me just pop back to the slides and let's just finish off uh, the slide and let you get back to waiting for your Windows 10 download. OK, so give the slides a minute to uh, come back. So I appreciate that. And again, here are your DICA data contacts. Uh, take the one down there that takes your fancy, I suppose. But the main one is obviously Microsoft.sales at DICADATA.com. .au. And again, please contact them with any questions that you may have around this. And I'm sure there'll be lots and lots of questions. Thanks for attending. Obviously, next week we'll be looking, diving into mobile device management. Then on the 12th, we'll be doing Azure in much greater depth. And on the 19th, we'll then start looking at Office 365 security and compliance. Remember, if you have any questions, please uh, send them to microsoft.sales at dickadata.com.au, especially around the licensing and the product availability for your volume licensing requirements. And if you have any other questions about the product or anything that I can help you with around Office 365 or Windows 10, please feel free to email me at director at ciaops.com. I will hang around for a few minutes, answer any questions in the chat if you have them. But thanks very much for uh, attending and I will stop the recording.